Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monday Angel Message. This is where you get your wisdom and guidance for the week ahead. I've got some cards to pull out for you and a subject to talk about. So, welcome to Monday, the 15th of July here in Australia. I think it's still the 14th in the Northern Hemisphere. So, whether you're watching this now or through the week, know that you're surrounded by love and there is wisdom, insight, and guidance here for you. And what I have noticed, and this has happened for many years, is that the words that I say or that I write, because I set clear intentions, those messages reach the right people. And so people often write to me and say, how come your public message, which you know is, is for everyone, actually is so meaningful for me? And that's because I'm channeling. And so when I'm channeling the angel messages, they're dropping thoughts, they're dropping ideas, they're dropping guidance in for me, then the message that is meant for you, you will hear. And I've said this before, sometimes people will hear something that no one else hears, or it might trigger something for you, the words I say, the message that comes through, the guidance, the healing. And that triggers something, some inner knowing, some knowledge, because the angels aren't just working with me, they're working with you as well. This is a it's kind of a triangular energy. There is, there is the angels, there's me, and there's you, and there's your angels. And so the whole thing isn't just about me and what I can do. This isn't about performance or what I look like or what, you know, this is really, it's not about my ego. This is a clear and pure message channeled through me to you. And what I've learned to do over the years is trust what I hear and what comes through me and, and give it give it clearly to you and of course there's a little bit of me in there because I've been on this journey for 16 years and I've been you know I've learned things I've learned a lot <laughs> along the way and honestly somebody asked me the other day why I work with angels and um, you know what it is that angels do to help people and that's what I want to talk to you about today and I thought to myself and I said it I don't really know what I would have done without my angels and they're not these woo-woo fantasy creatures um, of no meaning, you know. They're, they're wise beings of light and love. They contain, they contain all of the, the wisdom of the universe, if you like. And the word angel means messenger of God. And I think that's maybe been misinterpreted a little bit. I, I believe the message of it is a really strong you're a huge part of it that's why we love them because they bring us our guidance but they're also i believe they are the love of god the love of the divine whatever your word for god is it doesn't matter you know i'm not religious i haven't been raised in a religious family or um you know joined a religion i'm baptized i'm, I'm christened but i'm i've never been introduced to lots of um lots of interpretations of the Bible, and that's really a lot of what we get, is interpretations. And so I am not sort of bothered by the word God. I used to be, but now I've realized what it, what it really means. And so I no longer think of it as a masculine um, being on a cloud with a pointy stick <laughs> that's judging um, who's good and who's bad and who's going to heaven, who's not. And I don't believe in a lot of the indoctrination and the, and the um, beliefs that are out there because I think it's only half the story. If any of the story, it's very edited. And so I come, I, I believe that's why, one of the reasons why I work with angels is because I, I come with no bias. Everything I learn, I learned. Um, and so from direct experience. And so for me, the whatever word you use doesn't matter the universe god the creator the source great spirit divine spirit doesn't matter and i will keep repeating that because lots of people do get bothered by by certain things and don't understand what that is so i'm just seeing all of you here hi there's so many beautiful people here lucy and mark hi mark hi Nerily. hi lucy thank you i'm happy you're joining live too hi karen and sumi and Kerry, Cassandra, Kirsty, and Kerry, D. Hi, beautiful. Hi, Logan. Lovely to see you here. Rhonda, Cassandra, Sharon. 
goodness, we've got quite a lot of people here. So maybe the angels called you all in. Lan and Tia and Cheryl and Tracy and Rick. I'm sorry if I've missed anyone. It's moving really quickly. Oh, Patricia. And namaste to you, Rick. And Natalie Yates is here. Hey, Natalie. So I'm going to pull you some cards and we're going to talk a little bit about the angels because it's really important to understand. Yes, I talk a lot about personal development because that wisdom is the wisdom that I get passionate about. I get passionate about people transforming their lives, healing from the heaviness. And that's what the angels help me to do. They help me to heal and transmute my pain, the things that were sabotaging me, the things that were holding me back throughout my life. And of course, the journey continues. But it's it's not just, you know, isn't it beautiful? There's some fluffy white beings somewhere with wings. This is the beings of love that are here to lift us up. And they are here because they know how difficult it is for us. They know that on this earth plane, which is a beautiful place, we should never forget that, but that here we are learning deep soul lessons. And we are also learning to master our energy, our mind, to understand the laws of energy, the laws of the universe. We're here to combat the dark, heavy energy that can take over our thoughts. And, you know, humans are susceptible to things like greed and ego and self-destruction and, and negativity and feeling less than people and, you know, struggling with, with ideas like abundance and who we are and what we are. And so the angels are there as the alternative energy to all of that. And with the wisdom, the knowledge, the guidance, the healing, they're incredibly powerful healers. They are incredibly powerful healers. I am, you know, at core, I'm a healer. And I've worked with the angels for all this time. And because they can transmute that heavy energy, the cause of all disease, disharmony in the body, mind, spirit, is fear. It's the lower energy of fear. You know, all healing is essentially the release, the transmutation of fear. And you probably know this yourself as a compassionate, loving person. You've probably tried to help someone who's been in a lot of pain. And you found yourself feeling drained, overwhelmed, bashed about, um, maybe even toxic, because you've tried to carry that pain on behalf of someone else. And that's not our job as humans. We, we can hold space for people, but we have to learn properly how to not hold that energy and how to not allow toxic energy into our body, mind, spirit. And um, the angels are the masters of that. They will transmute the, the heavy energy when a person is willing to let go. And that means to take it away and completely remove it, not keep it in um, anyone's body, including your own. So um, I don't know what I would have done. And I know that the angels, you know, without my angels, and I know that the angels have helped, you know, thousands of people I've worked with and, um, and helped me. And that's how I can talk about them because... Um, I've experienced them firsthand in many ways. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Mark. And Rosemary. Hi. There you go. Drop everything and tune in. And Peter. Maybe it's, it's the angel energy. Thanks for being here, Peter. So how are you going with this Mercury retrograde? We're in Mercury retrograde. Lots of people are coming up with anger. Lots of people are coming up with kind of a, a forcefulness. Maybe there is... Um, uh, not maybe, we're definitely being called to put up our boundaries with gentleness, but with love, but with our own um, forcefulness with love, right? So be careful of people trying to push you into corners um, energetically or force their opinion on you or just out there looking for a battle. You know, high energy transitions trigger people. They trigger people. Of course they do. You know, there's there's a lot of positive energy and there's a lot of negative energy and so when people are triggered and they're unconsciously triggered they're not aware of themselves or what's going on for them they tend to project it outwards and so they they do that with control with criticism with judgment their adrenals are switched on so they're looking for a fight fight or flight you know there's no better way to release some poison right some venting if you can find a stranger to have an internet argument with, like, oh my God. So we've got to be careful of that. I got sucked in a little bit last week. 
to um, because one of my pet hates is racism and prejudice and bigotry and I just I just sort of chimed in on the conversation and ended up being like um, and you know it's important to remember as well that people are being triggered from their own pain and so that stops us going into victim us going into pain about it and maybe it's an opportunity to learn something maybe it's an opportunity to teach something but What's their stuff is their stuff. What's your stuff is your stuff. So now we've got a full moon and eclipse in that mixture. And I made a video about how to survive Mercury retrograde, which is in my Rich Radiant Angel Free group. It's a manifesting group. You can find that on Facebook. Just type in Rich Radiant Angel Manifesting and you can join that and have a look at last week's video that I put up. Um, but you've got to survive it by holding on to your power. You can't go into victim and anger at Mercury and um, anger at the planets. You know, everything happens for a reason. We're, we're all part of this divine plan. And so we've got to trust that what's coming up is what we need to heal at the moment. I made heaps of notes for today. So the message for, for Mercury and this eclipse is what do you want? What do you want? What do you want to manifest? What do you want to create? Rather than looking at what you don't want to protect your energy and sometimes that means stepping away from drama stepping away from the people that suck you in or trigger you and it also um means don't be a doormat like this is not the time to be a doormat we are healing deep soul wounds at the moment all of us the awakened as well as the unawakened the unawakened might might not recognize that they're healing old wounds but at the same time the pain is exacerbated for a reason it's being magnified so sometimes we you know we've all been in that position where suddenly we've woken up to like oh hang on this is the fifth time this has happened what's going on for me here so we don't judge we just recognize what's really going on so what do you want what do you want to create what do you want to heal you can put that out to the angels Archangel Raphael who's here so strongly this morning um, so Raphael is um, his energies are very bright green and as I'm speaking to you I'm always speaking to you with a light behind the camera because it helps um, smooth out some of the wrinkles but I'm seeing green in that light so Raphael is with us really really strongly I actually invoked him this morning um, to help us with the healing I want you to know that the angels are trustworthy and they come to us with trustworthy guidance ignore any stuff out there that's saying there's a fear-based ideas around angels. You don't need to tune into that or listen to that. That's the problem that's going on with that person and that belief system that doesn't have to be anything to do with you. Trust your feelings, trust how you feel. Yes, you're right, Natalie. You're being called to step into your authentic self and step into your power and even more than you are already. I know that you already are a powerful woman and that you authentically, um, you are living your authentic path. Um, it really is a doozy at the moment. And it's it's also, there's a lot of energy there, just like Dee says, like there's lots of, there's good energy. Um, so that's why we've got to step away from all of this kind of um, propaganda. It's like, oh God, it's Mercury retrograde, everything's gonna go wrong, this is awful. We've gotta stop doing that, like that sucks. And Mercury retrograde happens too often for us to give our power away to some idea. We've got to remember there's only one power, and that power is good, good, divine power. That power is good. If we believe and give faith to the fear and negativity, we give that power away, and we don't remember that the divine is the ultimate in charge of all of this. So, all right, I'm going to pull some cards, and then we'll see what comes up, because I want to talk about the wounds the soul wounds and how you can get back into your power by healing them. So I'm using keepers of the light here and I'm asking Raphael and Michael, the archangels, to work through me and with me. And you might feel a little tingle of um, a wave of warm goosebumps just to signify that the angels are here working with you and pay attention to your thoughts and ideas that come up. Okay. All right, we've got three cards. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even need the cards. The cards are like the subtitles that come after the um, after the event. I just talk. 
So look at this card. What does that say to you before you even see the words? We've got this beautiful energy of the full moon coming forward for us. There's the shadow represented by the crow or the raven. Um, I love crows and ravens. Lots of people hate them. I love them. They represent the shadow side that needs to be healed. And we need the dark in order to have the light, right? But also they represent the mystical, the um, other side, the other side of the veil. And so I'm really feeling here, and I'm getting goosebumps up my arm that's holding the card, that... We can expect the veil to be thinner in, in this week with the eclipse, the full moon, and everything else that's going on. So this is an excellent time to bring through guidance, to bring through messages, notice the synchronicities, notice the signs. Get out of your comfort zone and go a different way to work. Go for walks. Get out of your normal bubble because you don't see signs just in your house scrolling on Instagram. You see signs when you get out. So you're really getting a message here. Now this is about phases and cycles, the goddess is Freya. And it says there's a beginning within every ending, illusions are revealed and released. So remember the illusion is fear. The illusion is darkness. The, the illusion is that you're powerless, that you're controlled, that you're a victim, <clears throat> that you um, are somehow de doomed to suffer. <laughs> Those are all illusions. And so you've got, if you buy into the illusion by thinking about it, investing in it, believing in it, giving energy and thought to it, then the illusion becomes your truth because what you think about creates your experience, becomes the truth for you. You have to get this idea that this is a mental universe. We, our mind is what matters. And I'm reading a book about Mary Magdalene, the um, Gospel of Mary Magdalene at the moment, and it's perfect because she asked Jesus, all these questions about having visions and about manifesting and about our connection with the divine and a lot of it what I've read so far the amazing book is about the mind it's like we don't this is where it all is but it's when our mind is aligned with our heart if our mind is just in judgment it's just in the ego we we are suffering from the illusion all the time so this is why the angels come in we call in the angels because they are representatives of our divinity. They're representatives of the divine. They, are, they carry that energy. We can't fail to remember our celestial origins and our divinity in a human body if we've got the angels in our presence. We're calling on them all the time. We're invoking them. We're asking for their support. Lift up my thoughts. Align my mind with the divine mind. Align my will with the divine will. Help me walk my true path. Help me be my authentic self. Help me speak from love, not from fear. And when they do that, they literally lift you out of your ego. And they, they, they rescue you from the illusion, from the pain, from the suffering. And they also give you solutions. So you've got to take action on those solutions, right? Many years ago, very short story. Many years ago, I had a breakup with this guy. And it was a really toxic relationship. It was only short, didn't last very long. And he got real possessive, he got really judgy, he got really jealous, he got really weird. So one night there was an argument over something um, awful and he just went. And the things that, he, that had happened and he said were really painful for me. And I lay in the dark with my eyes closed crying and just praying for help. And all of a sudden my room lit up from behind my closed lids and there was white light everywhere. I'd never seen anything like it. And then there was a, um, a triangle, um, I don't know how you would call it, of angels in white and total silence except for this kind of strange, rustly, hiss, um, whispering um, sound. And utter peace flooded through my body and my mind. And in that moment, it didn't matter if I had my eyes open or eyes closed, I could still see them. And in that moment, that peace that was showing me I just had this feeling that everything was going to be okay. And okay, it's all right to say that. Everything was going to be okay. It was okay. Of course it was. It was the best thing that could have happened. But the angels came in and took away all of the fear, all of the pain, all of the doubt, all of the, the kind of why have I attracted this feeling. And, and, and I slept peacefully. This happened for such a long time. I, was, I kept blinking and like trying to shake my head like, am I imagining this? I wasn't imagining it. They were there. So... 
a few days or weeks later when things had calmed down, this person contacted me and in the trying to be nasty said, when I drove away from you, I had this amazing peaceful feeling that I was doing the right thing, getting away from you. And I thought that just makes me feel amazing because that means that the peace of God was not just with me, it was with him too, right? So of course it was for the highest good for that toxic relationship to end. Um, but the thing was, is that when we call on the angels, when we, you know, you may not have, you know, this was five years ago, you may not have a vision for five years, for two years, you, you may not, but the peace of the angels will affect you when you call on them. And that is what heals us. And those are the things that we need to heal from is the disease of fear, the disease of the wounds that we've taken on in this lifetime and any other lifetime that have damaged us on a energetic, soul, physical, emotional level. And that affects the way that we think, it affects the way that we see the world. And then if we don't heal those wounds, we go on seeing the world with that perspective. We go on having the same experiences over and over again. So the second card is Katumi, which is the cloak of wisdom. Look at this. I love that there's the Om symbol and there is the um, Ankh at his um, throat. I love these cards. And this says, you already know the answer you seek. Trust what you know. Now, what I get from that is the cloak of wisdom. It's time for you to step away from drama, from things that pull you out of your center. Do you find that, that sometimes you're not your true self or you're not your higher self, you're not coming from your best place because you're interacting with energies, people, things, doing things, eating things, drinking things that are that pull you away from your, your wise self. In a way, there are two of us, right? There's the ego, lower self, the one that's easily pulled into drama and fear and anxiety and, 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 and that's not a judgment. That's just the stuff we have to learn and heal. We have to go through these stages and heal them. And then there's the wise, centered, grounded, higher self. So the Katumi card is asking you to put on your cloak of wisdom, call in wisdom, don't react, come from a space of responsibility and know that you have the answers within you. If you are arguing, if you're conflicted with yourself, then come back to what you already know. What's your intention? What is your intention? What's your highest intention? And the outcome card is El Mariah, who I love. And this says, okay, so then we've got the word cloak of protection. And this is about awakening your presence. And how did we speak this morning about awakening? We're always, we're always going to sleep and waking up, right? physically, but we're also doing that spiritually. So don't beat yourself up if you're on a spiritual path and sometimes you kind of go, oh my God, I forgot I've to call in my angels or I forgot to do my mantras or I started talking about negativity again. Come back. It's just another awakening for you. That's part of the process of being human. That's where our angels come in. So the universe is with you. Wear a cloak of protection and love. When you protect your energy with a shield of light, with the angels, and with a decision that you've got a boundary, not going to let other people eat into you. You're too precious. Don't let people eat into that boundary just to be nice, just to be a doormat, just because you feel bullied or pushed over. Then, then you start to lose your self-care. You start to lose your center. It's too easy to go into reaction and, and negativity because your spiritual immunity has gone down. You know, you feel vulnerable and you've got no barrier between you and the fear in the world. So when you put that cloak of protection around you, you call on the angels, you call on your spirit guides, and you start to feel the love of the universe and stop groping outside of you for other people to give you that love and recognize that it comes from within. And this is what, this is guidance, but this is also the outcome. It's like when you follow the guidance in these two cards this week, you'll start to feel a higher awakening coming to you and with that the physical things that you want the material things that you want will come to you the right way you won't have to chase manipulate struggle you know this is everything will start to flow towards you because you become a receptive energy of love instead of being from your powerless space you're more in your power so 
Recognize that the angels are with you. Call on them for help, particularly this week, Archangel Michael and Raphael. You might want to invoke them to a little ceremony that you do for the full moon to put out your intentions and to, you know, maybe write down some boundaries for your life at this time and things that you want for yourself and the things that you don't want, that you don't want to give your energy to anymore. Recognize that you are valuable, that you're precious, that you're a divine being, that you are equal parts, physical and spiritual, and you need to honor both of them. We don't get very far just honoring the one, just honoring the physical and the, um, and the emotions. We don't get very far with that. That's why I work with angels. If you would like to work with me, just get in touch. You can use the link that I'm going to put up on this, or you can go over to my website, rachelskolter.com, which has had a little bit of a makeover recently, and have a look at that, and have a look at the services that I offer. If you want some more content, you can go to my Rich Radiant Angel Manifesting group, where I come on more often with video and lives. And if you would like, and you haven't yet signed up for my two free meditations, they're actually changing very soon, I'm getting there. Two free meditations, Deep Energy Clearing with the Angels. You might, might want to use those this week. Just go over to rachelskoltop.com, a little box will pop up, you can put your email address, and they will be delivered to you within the hour. So let me have a look and see what if you've got any questions. Hi, Graham, Katie, Marsha, Carolyn, and Emily. So yes, we're going more with the um, with the spirit. Thanks, Natalie. With the spiritual side this week, but that is you know essentially what we always are going with. And remember, the wounds inside of you are there for you to learn wisdom from. You heal them and you'll learn the, the wisdom. You're not damaged for life. You don't have to stay with these things. I'm gonna be talking um, in my blog today about the soul wounds and the traumas and a little bit of advice about how to heal them. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for all your comments and for supporting me and I will see you next Monday. Angel blessings.